Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,289. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file, also the zipped folder with multiple files, click on the link below the video. Hey, here's the question. I downloaded a series of CVS, comma, separated values. That should be not CVS, which has columns with cells, $1.93 USD, 214 USD, et cetera. Is it possible to total a column of cells in such a format without having to manually remove the USD? Now, I'm actually going to go over to Windows Explorer because if you really did download it as CSV, it would look like this file right here with that extension is not a real Excel file. So although the techniques I'm going to show you might work here, when you try to save it, you might lose some work. So I'm going to F12 immediately and come down and change the CSV extension to some XLX, M or B. I'm going to change it to XLX. And now I click Save. And we could see up here that it changed. And over in our Windows Explorer, we can see it changed. And now we could do whatever we want because it's a real Excel file. Now, we're going to look at a bunch of different ways. I think the fastest and easiest way to do this is click in the top cell, Control-Shift-Down arrow to highlight down all the way to the bottom, Control-Backspace because I want to jump up to the top. And I'm simply going to use the Replace feature. Now, Home, Editing, and under Find and Select, there is Replace. The keyboard is Control-H. And I'm simply going to type space USD tab. That is going to replace it with nothing. Replace all. Click OK. Click Close. And instantly, we have removed it, and our sum works. Another way that doesn't require using Find is we can use Flash Fill. Now, Flash Fill is only in Excel 2013 or later. I'm simply going to end the column right next to the numbers, show Flash Fill what I want. I want to extract 75.04. What I'm trying to do with Flash Fill is give it a pattern that it can recognize so that when it looks over here, it knows what to extract from the cell. I'm going to hit Enter and give it a second example. 51, and instantly Flash Fill gives me this ghost list. And when I hit Enter, Boom, there it is. That is the second method. And we can check. There's our sum function. It got the right total. Still another method, we could use a helper column. So I'm going to create a formula here and copy it down. And we want to use a formula if we weren't allowed to remove the USD. Or maybe this was going to change or something like that. Now, we can do this a number of different ways. And I actually have a reference video for a very similar type of formula. And we compare and contrast multiple formulas, including array formulas. And this one tends to be the fastest calculating. I'm simply going to use the substitute function. Now, the substitute function needs some text. And notice this is text. USD with a number, that is considered text. So I click right there. The old text that I want to substitute for is double quote USD and double quote. Notice I didn't put a space there, comma. And the new text, well, I'm going to put the syntax for replace it with nothing, double quote, double quote, close parentheses. Now, when I Control Enter, I can see that it's still text. Not only that, but if I were to evaluate this, F2, F9, you can see there's still a little space at the end. Now I'm going to click Escape. F2, I'm simply going to do any math operation on a number that is considered text. The math operation I'm going to do is plus 0. Now the plus 0 will convert it back to a number and get rid of the space. Control Enter and the dollar sign for that matter. Double click and send it down. And now we can see our sum function is doing its thing. Now if we weren't allowed to have a helper column, and we needed to keep the, all the USDs, and we wanted to simply add, we could do an array formula. Now notice, anytime you want to go from a helper column to an array formula, you simply look at the formula. And notice, if I were to enter, F2, enter, F2, enter, F2, notice the blue one is always a single cell. But up here, I'm going to do the exact same formula up here, except for I'm not going to put a single cell. I'm going to put the whole column. 
And in fact, watch this. I'm going to totally cheat. I'm going to copy this in edit mode, come up here, equal sign, control V, double click where it says text. And now I'm going to click in the top cell, control shift down arrow to highlight all the way down, control backspace to jump back to the active cell. And now I'm going to hit the F9 key. And you can see, sure enough, it's delivering all of those numbers. In essence, I took the whole helper column and brought it up into the cell. Control Z. Now I can simply wrap some product around it. Now why not the sum function? Well, I could do the sum function. But if I forget to do the special keystroke, because this is an array formula, and hit Enter, it gives me a value error. If I remember to do the special keystroke, which is Control, Shift, and Enter, that's me telling Excel to calculate this array formula. Those curly brackets up in the formula bar are Excel telling me that it understood it's an array formula. But F2, forget it. If we have an array operation like this and our goal is to add, we simply use SUM product. Now, SUM product normally takes array 1, array 2, array 3, and multiplies them and then adds them. But if you have an array operation, because that array 1 argument can handle array operations without doing any special keystroke, I'm simply going to use that one array. The product part won't happen, meaning it won't multiply array 1 times array 2. It'll simply do the sum part, which is to add. When I hit Enter, boom, there it is. So that is a single cell solution. Now I'm actually going to make sure that this is pointing to the right place. I'm going to drag this over here and Enter. Now, as I mentioned over here, this video here compares and contrasts multiple ways to do this same type of problem. And one of the formulas it looks at is left and then len minus 4, because we want to only take the left of that and not have the space in the USD. But that formula, and especially when you do the array, is takes a little bit longer to calculate. And it makes sense because it would have multiple array operations. And you can watch that video over there if you'd like. Two other great ways to do this, text to columns. I can simply highlight this entire column, Control, Shift, Down arrow, go up to Data. And then text to columns feature down here in the Data Tools allows us to take a column and split it apart. Now I'm going to use the keyboard Alt-A-E. And it's going to ask us, fixed width? We don't have a fixed width, because how we want to split it sometimes is like four characters here, and sometimes it's five. So I'm going to use a delimiter. And the delimiter just means, hey, is there some character here that will allow us to split it? And there is. It's a space. So I'm going to click Next, uncheck Tab, and say Space. And instantly down here, in fact, let me do that again. You can see it's a single column. When I click Space, now we can see it's three columns. Next. and then. For the dollar sign, I'm going to say do not import. Now it says skip. Right here for USD, I'm going to say do not import. Now it says skip. I do not want to replace everything. I want to keep it. So destination, I'm simply going to say, hey, right in the cell to the right. Now I can click Finish. And just like that, I've used text to columns to split this apart. Finally, the original comment here said, I downloaded a series of CSV files. If each file needed to be done individually, we could have done it this way here. But what if we simply, and we'll go look at one of the other items you can download. So when you download it, it will be 1289 CSV files. But notice there's 123 files in there. And if we open these, each one is, as we said before, a CSV file. I don't want to open up each one. If my goal is to simply have a consolidated column with all of the CSV files, I don't want to open up each one and convert each one and then add them and stuff. I'm going to close this. So we are going to use Power Query to import all of the files and load them into one column. Now, I'm using Excel 2016, so I simply have to go to the Data ribbon and the Get and Transform group. Now, if you don't have 2016, then all you have to do is go to Google and search for Download Power Query. And you can download it, and you'll have a whole separate tab called Power Query. All right, 2016, Get and Transform, New Query from File. And check this out at the bottom. It says From Folder. 
This is amazing because we can click Browse, point it to that exact folder. And remember, there's three files in there. Power Query will know to import all three files. When I click OK, click OK, it will give us information about all of the files in that folder. We don't want any of the columns except for the content column. Now, we're never going to have any other file types but CSV, so we don't even have to worry about this one. I'm simply going to come to Content, right click, and check this out, Remove Other Columns. Now, because this is a text file like TXT or CSV, we see this little icon here. When I click it, it will instantly expand. Over here, we have some steps that it has already performed. Now, these are the steps for the query of how it goes and gets the data and imports it into Excel. We definitely want to name this. I call it CSV Import Files 01. Now, we're going to look at our column here and check that out. It took the field name from the files and included it as a record. Now, why did it do that? Because these are all considered text. Well, we can fix the first one by coming to the upper corner, clicking and say, use first row as headers. But remember, there's three files consolidated here, and it only promoted the first one. So the trick is we come to the filter, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and there it is. For us, there's two other field names recorded as records, so I uncheck this. And this is the filter feature, so now it will always filter out amounts. Click OK. Now we have to get rid of the USD, so I'm going to click on the column, come over to Replace Values. Value Defined, I'm going to find USD tab. Replace with nothing, I come over and click OK. And instantly, there it is. There's our new step over here in our steps for this query. Now I'm going to highlight the column, and the final step will be, hey, I'm going to say, please give me data type as currency. And just like that, our values are there. There's all the steps. There's our name. Come over to Close and Load. I'm going to say Close and Load 2. We definitely want a table, so if we were to ever import new data from that folder, it would automatically update. I want it on this existing sheet in AA3. That's exactly the right one. I'm going to click Load. And just like that, there's our workbook query. We can edit it or go look at it or delete it or refresh it. There's our Excel table. Now, this formula is not right, but I'm going to delete it and Alt equals to add it up. Click in the top cell, Control Shift down arrow to highlight all the way down, Control Backspace, and notice it puts proper table formula nomenclature in. That's the name of the query. And the imported table here. And that's the field name in square brackets. And Enter. And just like that, we get exactly the same number. Now, the beauty of this is that we consolidated three separate files into one column. And if we were to add any files, in fact, let's do that. Let's go look at our folder. And this is another one of the files you can download USD file for. I'm going to copy it, double click this folder. There's three of them. Now I'm going to Control V to paste. And boom, now when I tell the query to come back to that folder, it'll automatically get all of these. Alt Tab. How do we do it? Right click, refresh. Zoop, and just like that, now it has 193 files. Control Down arrow, you can see it's down to 196. Control up arrow, and I'm going to scroll up F2. And sure enough, of course, it got it right, because that is table formula nomenclature. All right, in this video, we saw a bunch of great ways to get rid of USD from the most straightforward to the more comprehensive and complicated. We used Power Query when we had multiple files and we wanted to potentially update it later. We definitely saw text to columns. We also saw if you wanted a formula so it was dynamic, we saw how to use substitute and a helper column and then add it, or simply use this array formula. We also saw flash fill. And finally, the easiest and most straightforward, if it's just a quick and easy one-time deal, just find and replace. All right, we'll see you next video.